Okay, so we are looking at 10.2, the area between curves. So the first one says find the area between the curves f of x equals 2x plus 1 and g of x equals x on the interval 0 to 5. And with those square brackets, just a reminder that that means we do include the 0 and we do include the 5 as well. Um, and although it didn't ask for it, let's sketch out what this might look like just to get a general sense of what we're dealing with. So g of x equals x, we know, would be a diagonal line. So if x is 1, y is 1. If x is 2, y is 2, all that stuff. And then the other one, y equals 2x plus 1. Well, if I just make my 1 there, I'd go up 2 over 1. So I'd have something that's going a little bit slanted like that. Like that. And maybe I'm just going to mark it down on here to say like that is my mark where it's equal to 5 because I wanted 0 to 5 on there. So we get to see what we're looking at or what we're working with because we are actually looking for the area between the curves. So again, if I were to do this, I would be looking for this colored in region in between them. You don't need the diagram, but it is so much fun to color this in. So, <laughs> like that just made my day. Um, at least we have an image of what it is that we're working with or looking for, and I think that helps with the understanding part. You don't have to do that for every question. So this requires the concept of composite areas. We've worked with composite functions before. So if I were to look at this, I would say f of x would be like that slanted sort of bigger part. Um, and then I would be subtracting from it our g of x, which is just like that bottom part, if you can make sense of, like, I'll kind of go, do you get what I mean? Like, we'd be subtracting that to find whatever is left over. Uh, I feel like this is getting out of control, but you get what I'm saying, right? So, that's what we're talking about here. I drew this wrong. Like, what I meant to do is straight at the bottom because we're taking the whole thing and then subtracting the g of x out of it. Does that make sense? So looking at this in terms of the equations and setting things up, we would say um, if we're looking at the interval from 0 to 5, so we want to take our antiderivative from 0 to 5 of f of x dx, whoops, f of x dx, and from that, I would want to subtract my antiderivative from 0 to 5 of g of x dx. And that would equal the antiderivative from 0 to 5 of f of x minus g of x dx. So that's just sort of putting it all together so you can see the big picture. I mean, technically, you don't need to write all this stuff down, but I want you to understand where it's coming from and to, again, go through it all to get some clarity. So, not, like, now that we have the big picture idea, it's a matter of taking the equations and basically plugging it in. So if we go to set this up, I would say taking the antiderivative from 0 to 5 of my first function, this f of x. So it's going to be 2x plus 1. 
So I'll color code it so you can see exactly where we're getting this from. Um, minus, or maybe the minus needs to be in the same color. There we go. The other function, which was g of x, and that was just this one, g of x equals x. So it's going to be just minus x. And then dx for the whole thing, again, to put the big picture together. So far, so good. Technically, do you see that these brackets don't really need to be there? I just put them there so you could see that's f of x and the other one is g of x. But if we want to work our way through this, do you see that I have 2x minus x? So I can actually rewrite this to say that I'm looking for the antiderivative 0 to 5. 2x minus x is just x when I do that and that plus 1. So you can do that and simplify before we start to do our actual work. And then still the dx is behind there. And now we go through the same steps as what we've been doing in the, well, I guess in 10.1 with the examples I showed there, which is that, oh, yes. To there? Yeah. So if we take this part, the antiderivative of that, as we know, would be 1 half x squared. So we'd get 1 half x squared, or I think I started doing that again. x squared over 2, whichever one you prefer, it doesn't matter. Plus, do you see that the antiderivative of the plus 1, we talked our way through this last day. It's like saying plus 1 x to the 0. So if I do the plus 1 at the top, it ends up giving me just an x when I work my way through that. And then I know that I'm finding that from my lower limit of 0 to my upper limit of 5, so I use that notation to write it down. Is it okay if I move it up now? Are we good up to there, everybody? Yeah? Um, are we all okay with that part and coming up with the antiderivative and simplifying and where we're at and I feel like the rest is the easy part which is just plugging it in so now we take our I'll color code it again we take our lower limit here of 0 and go up to our upper limit of 5 the upper limit I'll do in this color so you can see what it is and where it's coming from and now we just set it up this way I'm going to take the upper limit first and plug it in so I can say 5 squared over 2 plus 5, and then I subtract from that my lower limit plugged in, so that's going to be 0 squared over 2 plus 0 and then as we work our way through this, um, do you see that I would just have, like this whole part here is just going to cancel, so I'm really just dealing with the first part. 25 over 2 plus 5, so I actually end up with um, 35, oh, I should color code this, so I actually end up with 35, oh, that still didn't work, what, 35 over 2, um, once we work our way through and get the same denominator and add it all the way through. So far so good? That's it. That's, that's basically how to approach something like this. Again, I'll tell you the only thing that could change is the functions that we're starting with. But if you keep that step-by-step -step approach, um, I think you'll find it's not too difficult. Use whatever you need to. Shade it in, color, do what you need to to keep it organized. I mean it. I'm going to keep repeating this. I really think so many of the mistakes happen because you. it's so easy to leave something behind or to get disorganized. So if you focus on organization, I think you'll find that it's not too bad. Um, questions before we move on to the next one? Okay, one thing I'll point out on here though, if I zoom in on this, notice that f of x is always bigger than g of x, like it's always higher. So that's why we were able to use this 
Um, let's take a look at our next example. It says find the area between f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x on the interval 0 to 2. And again, it didn't ask for it, but we're going to do it anyways. We're going to quickly sketch this out because this is a little bit different than what we were working with in the other one. So if we have f of x equals x squared, um, we know if we're interested in 0 to 2, I'm just going to draw half of it. So basically we know it's like half a parabola going there to there for this part here. And then for the other one, g of x equals x would be g of x equals x would be this line if I were to go like that. Notice the difference between this and the last one that we had where the whole thing, like the one function was above the other function and this one's doing a little flip in the middle where the upper and the lower function, like they're swapping. Okay, so let's look at how to deal with that. So if, for example, um, I feel like I should have drawn this higher or larger. I'm just going to do that now and pretend everything's all good. I'll fix it a little bit. Let's fix that and fix that. So um, if this is at a value of, let's say, x equals 2, I'm going to put right there. Then the part that we're interested in is the interval up to, let's say, there. I'm going to just go like that so we can sort of start to see what we're working with. If we're looking for the area between them on that interval, then I've kind of got a couple of things going on here. I have this portion down here that I'll graph out or color in in the purple. I don't know if you can even see that. I feel like I should have done it larger, but hopefully you get the idea anyway. So I colored in this bottom portion. And then we have the other portion, which I guess I'm out of color, so I'm just going to use blue. Can we do that? I'll do this portion in blue just so we can keep track of it. And maybe I'm going to... No, that's fine. So we have these two areas to keep track of. I'm going to label them. Um, well, actually, let me label a whole bunch of things here. Let me say the blue line is g of x, and the pink line is the parabola, which was f of x. I feel like having that organization will help to clear things up and make sense of this. So then this area here, I'm just going to draw it with an arrow. I'm going to call that A1. And the other area there, I'm going to call that A2. This is just for organizational purposes so you can keep track of things. And again, I really feel like so much of math is the organizational bit. Um, so to find the overall area, I'm going to say total, I would do A1 plus A2. That is not thick enough. A1 plus A2. For A1, notice that G of X, oh, I got to color coat this. G of X is greater than F of X. And for A2, Notice that f of x is greater than g of x. So you see what I mean by the flipping thing from one part to the other? Can you see this stuff has the potential to be a nightmare? Telling you the key is organization, colors, or if you don't have colors, like shade stuff in. Use whatever you need to to keep track of things and keep organized, and then it'll feel... So much easier. Um, what could be potentially awful is fun. So, 
Um, if we want to deal with our total area, A1 plus A2, we set this up similar to how we normally do things. Um, so maybe it would have been helpful if I did A1 in the appropriate color. So let's do that so we can keep track of it down here. Do you see um, this portion here is has a value of 1, the point where it flips. So, what we would end up doing is we want to take the lower limit of 0, upper limit of 1, for x minus x squared dx. Why did I do x minus x squared dx? You know what? I should color code that. x minus x squared. Exactly. Everybody hear that? So we always pick the higher one to be the first one that we're listing in our setup. So this is for A1. This is for A1. Yeah. Which I tried to... Oh, see? The colors, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's that part. Plus, let me slide this over. Let's deal with A2. Uh, again, the problem is what color do I use? Can I use pink for A2 and we're still going to be able to keep track of things? No. That's not going to work. We're going to use, we're going to use this sparkly whatever it is. Look at that, there's sparkles. Okay, so that sparkly thing, silver, whatever it is, is A2. And so when we're dealing with A2, we're now going from our lower limit of 1 to our upper limit of 2. And this time it's flipped or reversed. So we're going to go with the pink x squared minus the blue x. And that's what we're using with the dx at the end. The key thing is getting the clarity in that process. Are we okay with that? The reason that we're flipping them and how we're setting it up. So again, organization is key. So now that we have the setup, the rest of it becomes a matter of plugging things in and making sense of this. So for our first one, we would have, if we're taking the antiderivative of this, do you see we would have 1 half x squared minus 1 third x cubed. That's going to be, um, how do I do this? That is basically like antiderivative of this stuff from 0 to 1. Plus, we're going to do the same thing with the other part here, which was this stuff in here. When we go to do that, the antiderivative of this x squared is 1 one third x cubed minus the antiderivative of this x is 1 half x squared. And again, this was from 1 to 2. So far we get it? Could potentially be a nightmare, but we're okay, right? We're okay? Good. Okay, so now this is a matter of plugging things in. Do you see that I would plug in the upper limit and subtract from it the lower limit here? So I would get, if we plug this in, do you see that I would just get 1 over 2? I guess I should still color code. 1 over 2. Minus, when I plug in 1 here, I'd get 1 over 3. And the whole thing would be minus 0 from plugging in this lower limit 0 at the bottom. Are we all good with that? The whole thing's going to get wiped out. So when I plug in 0 to both of these, I just get the 0. Plus, we do the same thing over here. But over here, there's a bit more going on. So let me gear up. I would start by plugging in the 2 first. 
Do you see that 2 cubed, I'd get 8 over 3? So 8 over 3 minus 4 over 2 minus, now when I plug in the blue stuff, I get 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2. From plugging in this stuff on the right here. Good? Again, the organizational part, if you can do that, you'll be just fine with this stuff. And then, I guess I can switch to my overall color, which is that green. And that is a, just a matter of putting these all together and simplifying. So we end up with 1 over 6 plus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 6. We end up with 1. You all know how to add fractions. I'm going to leave you to doing that afterwards. Pardon? After all of that. After all of that, it's just equal to 1. Isn't there something so, like, rewarding or satisfying about that? Yeah. Or do you feel That's disappointed? No, you feel disappointed? Yeah, I get it. Um, true. Yeah. And then it's like, why did I do this? Well, I hope that at least that is helpful. There's your work for this stuff.